Hello, everybody, and welcome back to part two of our review of Jedi Mind Tricks. Let's do it, Bonnie. Let's do it together. <laughs> the psychosocial, chemical, biological, and electromagnetic manipulation of human consciousness. Yep. That's the album we're reviewing today. <laughs> so this is the second part of it, meaning that we already went through the whole first yep. half of the psychosocial, chemical, biological, and electromagnetic manipulation of human consciousness album. Yep. Um, this is the one by Jedi Mind Tricks, of course. Obvious. Inspired by the book. I mean, anyway, I'm not going to do it again. But uh, so instead of, you know, going through all of our intro stuff, go watch part one if you want. Otherwise, we're going to yep. go through this track by track and give our thoughts. And on that note, we did tracks one through nine already. And now it's time for us to move on to the Immaculate Conception. Let's do it. All right, Bonnie. Tell us how you feel about this track. Well, um... Yeah, I feel like I was getting annoyed at this point by this album. Um, so I'm glad that we took a little bit of a break, but this is now we're getting right back into it. Um, and really just no reason other than um, just my own preference um, as to like what I like listening to and what I don't like listening to. I think we should just add the little commentary that so far we've established, just in case you're only watching yes. part two, Yeah, that the album is extremely dense lyrically pulling on a lot of ancient history eastern yeah. philosophies and things that maybe we aren't as educated in as as western montrealers exactly and so it's my own ignorance that is stopping me from liking this song so unfortunately um that's the truth um and like it for me like it just seemed like the same sort of stuff that he's talking about in every single song and i feel like it's just kind of getting annoying whereas like I like the fact that there's a theme going on here and like if there wasn't then I would complain about that but like you well, know like it's just like I get that there's like this kind of like well built sort of it's a book like it's sort of like this is what we're going through like chapter by chapter sort of um, but there's just like so much in there that I just am like whoa I don't understand what you're talking about at all um, and jumping from one thing to the next it's like very like well it's too much for me but anyways um i do like that that you know that they sample um pharaoh monk monch um a few times uh, i mean because everything that i've ever heard of his i liked him he's pretty interesting and kind of hard and kind of crazy um um i like like i feel like this would be like the kind of music that you would put on if you were like high and lying like underneath the stars and like just wanted to kind of feel like spaced out or whatever and you just wanted to like whoa you know be like that um <laughs> like this is this is a song for you um to like feel spaced out too it's like one of those kind of like trippy alien kind of stuff but um uh, it's good if you like this kind of music so another four on five because that's I my mean, that's my thoughts this is really just like geek out on language and rhyming and shit right yeah. that's that's what the real draw of this style is mm -hmm. it's lyricism but also pulling from something of substance right and i think it's really important to them that their bars actually represent and stand for something mm -hmm. so like the war of gods and men i condemn them who believe in ancient fallacies and here receive thieves burned the unholy in your filthy religion paganism in the prison of three-dimensional prison in a sense, it's a way of looking at people who support dark fallacies, governmental systems, corrupt situations, etc. And he represents the opposition fighting back against the chaotic rulers of the darkness. Mm. That's dope. I walk through the liquid of seven rivers and deliver rhyme schemes that cut like verbal scissors or arrows. The sacred science of the pharaohs, millennium prophecies of taros. So he is an immensely skilled MC with the ability to cut rhyme schemes that are crazy while also bringing in the ancient knowledge and philosophy that the world has whitewashed away. Muttered cattle yep. discovered near the crop circles that allow while we fight wars for political horrors like Mary Magdalene, the hologram plans his incisions, operations of Tibet and black magicians. Um, the signs are all out there while we fight for oil. Um, I mean, basically, he's coming through, and really, like, line for line, it's really cool. And if you kind of get where he's coming from in the general skeptical line of thinking it is, and you do have an understanding to it, I think it's a little bit more than getting stoned in a field with the stars, <laughs> which is absolutely not at all what I feel <laughs> the vibe to this is. Oh, interesting. I feel like this is the type of shit that, like, you study. 
and you like listen to it all pensive like and you sit there with the google open and you you know you're researching some shit as you go along the way and you know you're spitting the bars and you're almost trying to rhyme it like him and like this is to me like a rapper's rapper type shit you know like you, you're right. not necessarily coming at this with casual listening i'm not listening. saying that it's like you know it's not like shaggy or anything but <laughs> i don't know why i was just trying to find a random comparison but like it's definitely like well done and stuff it's just not my cup of tea i mean i understand how for you it was an overload in in, in terms of what it is because this album does have the one main criticism i can make where let's say this isn't your favorite sound yo by track 10 you're it's it you're you're in this is what this album's gonna be or you're out you know and so this album 100 percent suffers from a blender effect where like if you're not really accustomed to the tracks and you haven't really taken the time to familiarize with them it could you could play like me three or four of these songs and give me three or four of the titles and even having reviewed the album i might have a little bit of trouble mixing the right title with the right song and that's it's not like it's an issue to me because i don't think this is the type of album you're only supposed to listen to a few times and you know you're supposed to digest it and really absorb what's going on here and, and study it but unless you're willing to put in that kind of effort you're probably not going to get like the same level of enjoyment out of it you know like there's just to me like it's cool lines like watch me glisten like the sun the chosen one the cyborg relation my shit crazy like the freemasons meeting camp crystal lake with jason you know like that's a cool series of references to make some futuristic shit some conspiracy shit and some conventional horror movie shit mm -hmm. all put together to prove that he's the best you know and i think that it's that level of dopeness that makes it cool this song's notable because because it's one of the few without features leaving just Vinny to do his thing. And overall, I thought it was really enjoyable. I really, really do. I like how he uses overstand instead of understand, which overstand is like a next level understanding of things. I don't know how else to describe it, but it's like a deeper connection of understanding because understanding oh, is like makes a, sense. I mean, it's whatever. To me, it's like that's like jargon and i'm not the hugest fan of jargon in general so when fancy people use fancy language to keep knowledge hoarded a bit which is fine people can agree how they want but like i understand why people use overstand and i overstand even deeper why they don't use understand i don't know it's oh just boy. it's whatever so that's a 4.25 again because i feel like this is just the sound of the album and it's just so consistent and it's really dope in that regard and the next track is called the apostles creed I'm not gonna lie, the guitar on this song made me like it just like a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Not like a lot more. I'm giving this a 4.35 off the jump, cause guess what we got? Another track that's in like the same vein of everything that we've been getting so far on this project. This time it features Apathy and Yan the Phenomenon. And I think it's cool though that he has his crew coming through mm -hmm. and he cycles between them because I think one of the things that does make this album a little bit more fresh and alive is the amount of features who are rapping in the same style about the same things almost increasing the the validity of everything that's what i was wondering about when i was listening to it i'm like are these guys just like passing the same books around are they just like sharing the same like video cassettes or whatever because that's like, what i was saying it's like it's a, a pre like, are they just like part of the same church like what are they i mean they probably all grew up in the same areas and like We're this is Philadelphia, right it's pre-internet right like mm -hmm. yeah um i believe so and it's like so i just assume that they just hung out smoked the reefer and shared knowledge and they all kind of collectively learn the same stuff like you and all your friends probably all watch the same media and consume the same sort of stuff i mean you probably had a clique of people that watched the same movies and you know uh, so i mean like sort of 
But like, I you mean, probably a lot of saw things. other people who had those clicks, even if you didn't. Yeah. So it's like those like, people. Okay. Except this is their click, and I know a lot of people that are really into conspiracy theories. I mean, literally, there's no way the X Files survived nine seasons of the '90s if it wasn't like the shit, you know? Yeah. And aside from season nine, it's pretty much the shit. Uh, apathy comes in. It's because Mulder's gone, I don't and know. it's not I've the same with it. Without Dave Duchovny, it's just not the same. Sure. Um, apathy kills this one. You know, I sit upon a cloud of nuclear waste and taste the orgasmic juice of the goddess with her lips spread on my face. It's almost like seduced by the destructive nature of all the darkness. Like, I like the imagery there. As I speak in space, touching a damaged piece of satellite, resembling wrecking remnants of a 2010 soliloquy entity, centuries from the time of man designed a plan of a time span of seconds to an immortal, transporting mortals and portals toward an Egyptian land. I mean... It sounds really cool, and it flows really well, and I get the sense that he's out there, and it, it sounds really smart, and it's really well put together, and I can follow it grammatically, but conceptually, I'm like, all right, this is just like they're coming in, and I believe it's we're flossing that we are this cool, but like melted parted rock with acidic chemical blood samples from a reptilian female's period. <laughs> Damn! Like that is some next level imaginative. Like I want to know what the fuck they're reading so I can read that shit because this is fascinating as shit. I attacked mastodons when I crashed upon Earth in the Ice Age and twice laid mankeys with assistance cool. of sound waves and psychokinetics. You can't escape the wrath of the apathetic. Ooh, that was pretty good. <laughs> It's pretty good because he's apathy mm -hmm. and he came in so powerful he's like surpasses ages like it's it's really fun um and then uh yan comes through um and i'm pretty sure the non-conceptual non-exceptional or, or, or his plexiglass is something that we actually talked about from another track earlier on okay so i remember that plexiglass line i mean how often do you hear plexiglass True. Up? yan's all right does his thing um I don't know if I felt like as enthused with a lot of it. It's also at this point a bit of an overload, so I'm looking for like new shit that I find is novel. But like in general, I could take any random lines. So they ain't in my subconscious anymore. I'm more like the forces that I conversate with, halves, thirds, and fourths that I slice my soul into a percentage. I know you wouldn't recommend it, so I wrote this letter and never sent it. Cause my pain is my pain. I'm gonna trouble you with my own. Now I swim through rays of asphalt with no place to call my home, and that's like some deep ass actually deeper than i thought it was gonna be you know just kind of looking in this introspective reflection mm. on who he is in his soul and how he copes and compartmentalizes trauma to be able to get through the day yeah all i'm saying is it's good shit all mixed into here you know like it's not poorly written in any way icon comes in and uh ends this off and i really like how he comes in on the battleground you can go to war like sudan interesting sudan still if i'm not mistaken at war but i'm a half man so you have to understand that the other half of me is made of liquid steel ain't you sick and tired of people screaming keep it real and that is a fascinating point because how many people are like yo keep it real keep it, you know whatever and he's like yo y'all are just kind of faking my perception because i understand the real real because i'm powered by the ancient spirit and the soul it's war Our icon carries crossbows and then Something I think is really going on and was probably happening back then too is this spiritual warfare. Like I think people, at least I believe that we are currently undergoing a current form of what could be construed as a third world war in the beginning phases as it's mostly ideologically and physical uh, psychological divisiveness in how we approach everything right so you do have a lot of people screaming keep it real and they might mean conservative natures or they might mean liberal stuff so keep it real might be let's go back to the old ways you know or keep it real might mean a lot of things to a lot of different people okay. in this day and age right so instead of learning the history instead of learning what's actually real people are trying to almost recreate reality in their own image is something i see happening based on marketing branding based on a lot of things that people don't really know a lot about like here's a fascinating tidbit that is really true the concept of human identity the thing that we all cling to as people in 2019 everyone's so craving their personal identity identity is a product of political of the political and capital machines basically governments created uh, and businesses work together to create the idea of identity in order to sell more products grow the economy 
and create different classes and different modes, but ultimately to sell more products and grow the economy because they had hit the second phase of industrialization. They were able to mass produce stuff. The workforce was evolving. And what do you do with all these people? Let's give them identities. Because prior to like what? The agricultural revolution, everybody's a fucking peasant or you're a lord. You're either royalty or you're a fucking pleb. And the birth of the middle class is essentially a capitalistic move to sell products. Is the actual truth behind this right. current life that I mean, we it live. It kind of makes sense. I mean, you guys can go look into that. You don't have to believe me. You, can, In fact, I encourage you to come at me and, and try to teach me or show me something different. But from what I've seen in history, identity really exists so that I can buy a blue hoodie and you can buy a floral dress and we can feel like we stand out and are different in some way. Right. Um, so I thought that was all really cool. Anyway, I like the track. It's kind of what it is. I'm going to give this one another uh, four point, sorry, 4.35, like I said at the beginning. And I think Bonnie still has to tell us a little bit about what she feels. Nope. I, I said everything. All right. Did you give her a grade? Yep. Four? Yep. All right. Who Have Nothing is next? Yep. This is the last song on the album proper. All right. This song has a music video. And gosh, she looks young and real baby-faced and clean-shaven and <laughs> awkward and... And I want to say I've, I've, I've tried to do like proper looking cool in a music video and it's fucking hard. Like if you don't have any acting skills and you don't know how to dance, you got to come off a little awkward looking kind of <laughs> like Vinny does in this music yep. video, especially when he's like looking up at the camera and it's like his lips are so like red and pronounced as he's like rapping along. And it's a fine video otherwise. It really is. I'm not trying to talk shit or anything. It's just... I'm not ever gonna forget having his image of him in his freaking fish hat, fish full hat thing. And you know, it's so late 90s. Like, it's so what it is. I like it. But this song might be my favorite one off the album proper, actually. Like, yep. I feel like we dropped a lot of like the pretenses of flossing or whatever. And instead, we got this like extremely personal introspective song which to me came out of fucking nowhere i just wasn't expecting it like intersections in real time the unbroken circle and dimensions of the mind the tie that binds the eternal tie that defines the vanity of my insanity in due time yes it's still kind of out there but we start looking at that and it's not anything crazy it's am i sane am i like coping with things am i even tethered to this world that we live in and i'm like that's super relatable <laughs> it's like the first time i'm going that's well i mean i really did some of the stuff he was doing but like in a personal sense you know we'll shine like the light sees under the moon the haunted corners of familiar rooms yet i'm consumed we're vanishing into thin air the realization that this shit is my cross to bear you know, like having that knowledge and understanding and having to cope with that and to go through the world is not a simple thing. You know, being an advocate for truth is a lonely life, you know. Yep. Anyway, and then he flows through and I think it's pretty cool. But what really stuck with me is the end of the verse when he goes, I who have nothing but the comfort of my sins, I who have nothing but the comfort of my friends. And if we think about like anybody at 20, you're probably feeling really guilty all the time because you're conditioned into that. You probably don't really understand how to cope with your emotions, especially anybody born in Generation X or the Millennials. Um, and you're probably sitting there like, you know, with lines like with knowledge that the love is just another word for revenge, you know, complicated emotional states, feeling like everything you do is wrong. And all you really have is the comfort of the darkness of your soul and your friends who are probably just as miserable. Then that hook plays in and it's nice. I who have nothing, I, I who have no one. You know, just kind of this feeling of isolation. And then the second verse, as I decay, demons pray above me like a vulture. Ability to endure contradiction is a high sign of culture. And that's fascinating, right? Because your ability to put up with a bunch of bullshit in the world, clear contradiction is an accepted form of your high culture. And that's fascinating. Like he just doesn't mm. like this existence, you know? Verbal scripture is self-defacing. It is not God or lunacy that I am facing, but the erasing of the purity and the passion in my words. The herds of cattle Babylon will talk of the absurd, but I prefer to walk away from all the fuse to find my life is more confusing than a Rubik's cube. And you almost see him not wanting to become the sheep that consume of pretty much everybody in reality, wanting to be his own person. And, and basically, this song kind of explores the struggle of trying to relate 
the truth and knowledge to be out there and be real mm -hmm. but when on the other hand everyone's fake with it the natural side of life now has been seeming artificial but i can hit you and rest assured that i'm my last words i could give a fuck about your secret and your past words you know and it's like he's really into the truth and not the way things have been one of the things i struggle with so much as i've entered the middle class is this well it is the way that it is mentality that so many people have like yo we don't get paid enough it is the way that it is isn't it weird that like food costs too much money it is the way that it is what do you expect and I, my answer is i expect shit to be cheaper and for us to be able to make more money that's what i expect everyone else seems to be okay with things costing a lot and us making less money so i'm feeling like i'm confused by why somehow me questioning things is the weird one but alas that's middle class america for y'all um lost the modern america is a standard load and i gave it and i've grown into a being and sitting on top of a throne i've known for many years that i would turn to rust to find another reason for breath before my return to dust and i would relate a lot to that just because in this world what it is like if you really represent shit you will end up standing alone more often than not and growing into somebody with the confidence and the skill and the knowledge yet to be a king in a sense and then while you understand the implications of death is coming it's like you can make the most of it and it's, just, it's so powerful anyway the perception requires duality you know you need to be able to understand multiple sides of things to even understand perception inspect your soul the color of coal inside the body i have hardly come across them who's holy send them to the cherubim to control thee burning the sun in a fridge and it's so cold the battlefield is new but the war is not old and it's almost like everybody's a sinner everybody's dark everybody's got this battle and i just really like this one i think it's a step up from most of this album totally makes sense that it's a single and i give it a 4.5 on 5. yep um yeah i really like this one too um this is this is definitely probably my favorite one off of the album um it has a really great beat um i found like icon to be great uh, as usual i found his raps clearer and slower and um more importantly um there were a lot less of the kind of crazy references that were causing me issues um throughout this entire album so um i liked that there that i could actually like kind of understand what was going on in this song and kind of relate a little bit more um and i really liked the chorus i liked the um i who have nothing i who have no one um and that gets repeated i think that that's kind of interesting and cool because you know it just made me think of um you know when you're you're born into this world alone and you'll die alone and like that kind of like imagery is that you're you know you you know you make your own decisions in life you do whatever whatever happens in your life is because of your choices because of your actions because of you know your blah 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 so it's everything is just you know you are you um so i like this one i thought it was really cool definitely like i said my favorite one on the the album i give this a 4.75 on five all right so then um i guess that is the last track on the album it mm -hmm. makes sense it's a it's a strong one to close on and then there's six more bonus tracks they got thrown on that basically go back in time the longer we go into the next six tracks so the album comes out in 97 originally these all get re-released in 2003 and the first that are re-released is here is communion the crop circle thesis from 1996 mm -hmm. so this is just like a bigger posse cut version of i think a lot of what we've gotten on this project but bonnie why don't you tell us what you feel well um for me i was like oh, okay and we're back um <laughs> like okay there was one song that i was like okay finally we're kind of like transitioning or whatever and then like this is all about things that i have no idea what he's talking about um we have um, El Aloy, uh, Aloy, I don't know if I'm saying that properly. El Alo? Alo? I don't Alo. know. Um, he starts us off and he spits hard, but like I said, I have no idea what he's talking about. Um, this is definitely like a posse track. I feel like there was like, you know, I don't know how many people that were on here. I didn't count, but like uh, several, you know, a bunch of their buddies. Um, There's five of them. Five of them, yep. And uh, like... I just, I don't know. I didn't like, like, everyone's flow. I couldn't understand what they were talking about. Um, I found the beat to be very weird on this one, sort of, like, warped sounding, which I'm, like, obviously was supposed like to be the, the point. I like the shit, that do kind of sound. That's it. It's fucking like, cool. I guess, you know, like, I guess it's supposed to be the point that it's very, you know, underground and very, like, you know, instrumental and experimental a little bit as well. Uh, but this one was just not for me. Um, so I have this a 3.5 on 5, unfortunately. 
fair enough. I mean, El Elo a lot whenever it does start off real strong. Yeah. I am he who walks beyond the cycle of time. A guinea systematic survey on the heavens long before it dispels the Kemet. I had advanced cosmos journey apologist substantiate statements that command the aspects of creation. That sounds like he's a metaphysical being with all sorts of cosmic powers. Um, astronomers can't even interpret my ancient civilization of Andromeda, the dragon of Dracos. Come <laughs> touch the inner sun. I went forth the life force out of the core of Ebsu. Bring forth the possibilities of solar energy into infinity. Again, it, it really just sounds like he's a metaphysical being who's tapping into all of these super powerful, historically interesting things like the guy, like, like Galileo exploring the solar system or this militant Milankovic guy who basically mapped out the something, something about geography and uh you know it just kind of ends and you're like wow that was fast and a lot and then cosmic crusader follows suit you know the compartment mm -hmm. allies now my device shatters the fusel and nomas uh, for my dialectical destroyed innocuous and conquest travel beyond five dimensions cipher cytoplasm of phantasm an archetype of antithetical to atoms i leave you vacas like an orang uh, argon toron I'm like, I don't know exactly what he's saying, but I get the gist of what he's saying. I'm a next level metaphysical being that's going to fuck you up. And he's saying it with all of these words that he's using. Damaging demigods, crushing egos, into the wind, and into which a wench began by extracting a transcordial connections to macros, manic animals. And I'm like, okay. Like, it's really, like, well put together. But it's, it's really well put together. And I'm... <laughs> left with it's kind of like pushing it to the extreme yeah. and so in a sense it's like the linguistic equivalent of speed metal for the complexity of the language hmm. okay um ancient kemet's here and he's pretty cool at his shit this is when i learned about what kemet meant and then he f his verse is fine it's the same kind of thing i don't really have a lot more to comment on it i'm just kind of scanning it it's it's all fine icons verse i feel like What's distinct about him is his flow is just better than everybody else, you know? Through a series of psychological tests, I have been declared a demon traveling through dimensions. Fatal weapons leave you bleeding. Dissecting gray matter doesn't matter in my cathedral. I mean, the truth is, reading these lyrics, I feel like any one of them could have said it. And if there is one criticism that I could make about the way they approached it, it's that there's almost a lack of distinction within each person. Um, so I, I mean, although I, can, I do find that icon <coughs> usually stands out a little bit, like because his voice is repeated the most often. So Maybe. I guess you become like accustomed to it. But like, listen to this track when they're all a little younger mm. and a little like less pronounced. I mean, yes, Icon's flow here is better. In fact, I found that Icon's flow on a lot of these younger tracks was a little more hip hoppy and, and standard, and therefore I kind of liked it a little bit more than previously. Uh, but still, I thought it was a good track in regards to what he does. It flows through. Breath of Judah ends us off. And, I, and it's the same kind of thing. I don't have a lot more to comment on this one. I felt like we were, in fact, back in this part of the album. Vinny had the coolest flow. 4.25. Let's move on to a track from 1995 mm -hmm. called 123. So it doesn't tell me on Genius who the other guys are. But since the first two verses use a particular word, I don't think Vinny would be comfortable saying on wax, I'm going to go with it's not Vinny in the first two verses. Right. And they're all right. Um, it's a different vibe now, though. I feel like this is we're in a different area. Like, it's the infinite connect. Respect what you've seen as if you praise Donald Chief and understand my plan is to prosper till deceased and let my bank account increase until it overflows. I'm like... Oh, he's trying to get rich. Thousand dollar shopping sprees just for the hell of it. Drinking daiquiris in the back of caravans. I'm like, it's almost nice. It's, <laughs> none of that is distinct. It is all generic. It flowed well, but generic. But it's kind of almost nice to hear a little bit of like a different thing. I do like when he goes, people steady plot in your every move, you, you be watching, there's no room for error, once you slip, you're forgotten, it never has been, anyway, but the idea that you can't afford to fuck up and shit, I thought was nice. Second verse is pretty cool, they go back and forth a bit, um, and yeah, they don't fuck with us, is the point of that one. And then uh, Vinny comes in, and my raw essence is forever presence, but my team be chasing dreams of cream and digits into sevens. They haven't seen my body, and that's cool. It's kind of like I want money, 
but also gonna make it cool seven's heaven you know like still kind of on that vibe a bit mm -hmm. but also a little more relatable <clears throat> My verbal texture will bless you with scientific lessons on another plane it's hard to maintain because my membrane could strain within my inner frame to pain from my people and I'm involuntary. You in the scam for this love done or monetary. I thought it was cool. I thought this was like a little bit different, but it also felt very demo quality, less distinct to a point where I'm going at least the super complicated language for everything you may say about it being a lot and overwhelming I found it interesting to listen to more so than the generic nature of the first two verses on this track which were cool hmm. but okay. there was nothing in the first two verses that I thought was like like standout even like Vinny brings up the you know prophets whatever and then his verse and kind of adds some of that into it which stands out a little bit so I gave this one a 4.15. Yeah, um, I mean, I really liked the rhymes on this one. I thought that they were really cool. Um, I mean, I like the same, same thing. Same thing. Um, I didn't know who who was who, but you could tell that they were, uh, you know, they were all great lyricists, and their, their flows are really nice. I like the way that they sound. Um, I like the sort of like bird calls or frog noises or whatever that was like in the background of the beat. Like it was kind of cool. And um, the last line um, of uh, uh, of the song is, "You need to have no you need the knowledge of God to understand it." Um, and that's kind of how I feel is that I don't necessarily have the knowledge of God and like biblical knowledge and like you know like that kind of knowledge. So that's probably why I was having a really hard time um, understanding what was going on. And they're basically saying like, "You're not gonna get it." Uh, but I, either way, I mean, it was interesting. I liked the beat. I thought it was sounded cool. I gave us a 4.25. All right. So the next track brings us back to 1994, which keep in mind means he's now 17-ish mm -hmm. as he's doing this. Souls from the Streets. Yeah. There are nine motherfuckers on this song, and the only one whose name I know is Icon at the beginning. Don't ask me to know who any of the other eight MCs on this track are. <laughs> but Icon comes in. Ah, how about you go first? Um, I mean, I, I'm not going to say anything like too profound, really. Um, I mean, overall, I thought the, the flows were really nice on this one. Um, the beat sounded very, like, from, like, a different era, like, sort of, like, 60s or 80s. Like, I couldn't quite, like, place it. Like, there was, like, the weird flute. Like, there was something about it that, like, made me think of, like, Burt Bacharach or, like, like, I don't know what it was. It was, like, something just a little bit weird. Um, and like these guys are all just basically like showing off how good they are and like basically saying like, you know, you're, if you challenge us, you're, you're going to look like a fool, um, because we're the best. And, you know, it's so like that kind of track. I mean, this isn't anything new that we've heard before. Um, this is just sort of like, we're the greatest. And here's like a, you know, quick little demonstration of, you know, everything that we can do. And, um, they're just kind of like, don't even. And so uh, it's an interesting flow. It's not my favorite one, but it's, it's a good one. Um, I give this a 4.1 on five. I definitely think this is in the vein of your typical posse we the best song mm -hmm. um coming through but it, it's still like lyrically prowess driven like i think icon delivers one of his best verses here on the whole thing um my mathematical powers devour cowards as they spray words like acid rain showers nations you can't face them erase them or i praise them as my mind excites the wind like spiritual incantations time will clash haunch is cypher you know like it's almost like laying it down with this ethereal, like, I am transcending the basic reality of shit, you know? Draw blood from wax souls as they smack holes with accessible decibels. The damage that my syntax caused irreparable. Irreparable, sorry. The vanity of my insanity will force your whole clique to be divided. You have just bear witness to a dub side united. And I was like, damn, that's pretty strong. He comes in and he just fucking rips it. And keep in mind, he's 17, so it's pretty fucking good. Mm -hmm. Then, um... Verse 2 comes in, and it's kind of all right. I felt like it was a little bit less good. It's fine. There's not that many cool bars that are thinking there. Um, verse 3 comes in. It's all right. You know, it's a little tough. You know, body's less stiff. You can't fuck with my ruggedness. My gunshots is leaving on the acid, smoking out of cannabis like Weed Savage. I'm like, it's all right. There's nothing, like, super special there. Um, both of the lines in the in the hook come from root samples which i thought was really cool 
Um, my favorite part of the track is the series of verses four, five, and six, where I feel like everybody just flows really smooth and really cool. And it's not even so much what they say, because I don't think that anybody's saying next level shit here. But flowing, like I speak double double, because double trouble never do I mum- rumble or mumble. And microphone sever clones, you know, just the way it flowed, it was really cool. Next verse was the same kind of thing. Um, nothing really like out there in my opinion but still fun same thing with the, the sixth verse because we're up to verse six and um i don't know like uh this silence left dispersing leaving heads in a casket box this nappy had a villain for but torture is illegal i back down clowns before with a four pound as i defeat you certain lyrical songs the straight deadly and nickel played a verse to spit a hollow tip steady and i love the way that he just directly like my lyrics or bullets coming at you and whatnot but it's fine verses seven it's fine he forces people into the galaxy and it's all right i feel like at this point i was like this is a lot of people and nobody's really like being super exceptional with it mm-hmm. like everybody's flowing well and everybody's doing a great job with it but i don't feel like at this point exceptional like my assumptions canonical unstoppable mad logical i pull centrifugal mystical i mean it's cool but it's not next level I mean, centrifugal mystical. It's because a centrifuge is used in alchemy. It's not like, anyway. Sure. Um, and then uh, coming back from a city of Atlantic, it's the Hispanic causing mass panic with fast static for your attic. And then I thought to myself, which Hispanic rapper is this? And for the first time ever, I was like, I kind of wish some of these people had dropped their names. I'm usually not like mm. a fan of name dropping because I do feel like it's weak ass writing to have to rely on your name. But at the same time, who are you, sir? <laughs> eight, eight rappers in with no credits on it. It's a little challenging. <clears throat> I did yeah. like the Inspect Your Gadgets, my style switches because I flipped it. That was cool because of Inspector Gadget. That was actually a really good line. Mm-hmm. And then finally get to verse 9 where it just kind of ends and we get some love for Philly. And then it just kind of ends. And they all sampled The Roots, I guess, because The Roots is like the big band from Philly at that time, which is cool. And I like the fact that it's showing love from that, like the whole area and they do it and it's co- it's cohesive and like everything about this is cool except for the part that i i don't know i just couldn't really get into it as much as i thought i should but i felt it was still really talented just a lot of people gave it a 4.25 okay um so you want to talk about that the last straw the one soul remix mm-hmm. from 1994 i don't really like this beat that much I found it kind of grating, not as enjoyable for me to listen to, which also made it really hard to listen to the song, just because I wasn't listening to the beat, but the rhymes are still pretty good. <laughs> what do you think about this one? Um, I like the flow on this one. I thought it sounded good. Um, I think that it was like, once they once they were able to like let go, or maybe just because it's separate songs, and like these are older songs, and they're not necessarily part of like the album like itself, um like it definitely becomes more like relaxed and enjoyable to listen to like overall like it's less like oh my god here we are with like a bunch of things that we have to teach you and blah 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 and we're going to talk about all this stuff um so it's definitely like easier rhymes and it's easier listening um so so i'm a little like opposite of what you you said um i found this one easier to listen to um i like this one i thought it was great um I mean, and that's pretty much it for like that. I'm sure you're gonna go over like a bunch of the lyrics. I mean, there wasn't anything that particularly stood out. Like I've been, you know, I look at them as I'm kind of going through, and there's nothing that's like super interesting for me. But um, I, like I said, it's definitely easier lyrics, um, so I appreciate that. So I give this a 4.25. I mean, at this point, I feel like having heard what they end up doing with how they floss about being really cool. Stuff like word is bond, rock on, my diatrib will swarm and persevere. Mm -hmm. I mean, you showed me what that means later on or earlier on this album, but here it's not showing me what that means as much as just saying what's gonna be coming is dope, you know, which I think is cool because, you know, he's younger. And again, for a 16, 17 year old kid, this is fantastic. MCs will disappear, they will fear what is here and what is sadistic with linguistic ramp penetrating upside of mind like the burn of jack-o'-lantern. And I don't know, I just like, I'm like, it's okay. It flows really well, but I don't think it's as interesting for me to listen to. Um, It's like a watered down version of what we were previously getting. Now, I also appreciate that it's extremely talented and really 
also playing by the same rules and still being cool. Like, understand how my chant goes. Swift dialectics, cybernetics, my apparatus. If I throw morphic styles, I break tragic records, erratic catchables, if I breeze through. But I feel like it doesn't have the same tightness that we previously were getting. <clears throat> Okay. I don't know. The song goes on like I don't know. The next verse: throwing my fake feed light like blasting bullets through the flame, pushing fog out the mass way, catch a five thick vinyl ain't the number in my ashtray. It's like whatever. I that's what I feel like at this point. It's like okay, it's just kind of more violent, a little more aggressive, and I find it to be a little less interesting to me. Um, third verse comes in, and there's again not like a lot here because it doesn't to me like end at any kind of like next level thing like hit you with a verse because i'm evil with my lethal vocabulary spark a spliff it's very necessary so ease up or get caught up in the cemetery like anybody could have written it is i guess where we're at with these lyrics and so it's less interesting to me overall i felt like this song was just kind of like fine so i gave it a four it was good now don't get me wrong as like a kid coming out with some shit this is good like if i saw him spitting this live in like local land and you know seeing it, it would be freaking awesome but if we're talking about compared to everything we just heard it's definitely a step down okay um anyway that's fine uh the next track on the project is called tug of war all right i thought this one was like a fucking standout track like yep. it really was like one of the best ones we heard overall um it features um arch leon so maybe was on one of the other ones i don't really know but i like just from the adjust to the bus the attacks the crowd the simple flat plus hours i rush the format with four blind shots to your verbs and pronouns these herbs will slow down with terms to stick in a guitar i mean again it's nothing like next level but even just the focusing on linguistics and stuff and you got to kill mine this is even younger now this is 93 i feel like it's kind of cool like the younger they go the more impressive this becomes yeah i think so um and then i don't know his, like i don't know that his verse was 100 percent the most like riveting it was just like a really well flowed really interesting like this beat is pretty next level it's pretty up there i'm like okay stoop hit us with something really fucking proper here mm -hmm. but then it was really icon's verse which i think took this like seriousness to it that i really like from him at the beginning, squads find it hard to establish a working rhythm. My esoteric mysticism makes me a mathematician. And I kind of like that shit, you know. Anybody that talks about math and mysticism's got a good line. You know, but he flows in, get caught up in my harsh canopy of unhappy rhapsodies. Fragments are stagnant. We work with ultra magnets. My reverberation crush men to micro fragments. I get physical in a forest of absolute malnutrition. And you almost get the sense of like he's not taking care of himself. Things aren't necessarily going well of which is true of which is you isolation plus a reflux i see buck who get the equilibrium shattered to crushed to bits i throw fits and take trips to other dimensions etc but he really flows it through to this end like fell into the soul control what is concealed if a void is not filled my suicidal thoughts become real and it's like fucking interesting right like also he makes a falling a troy reference in the middle so he's got some history tucked into it mm -hmm. and so i'm listening to this surprising. It's and i'm like, like this is like a guy struggling to both understand life at a deeper level, dealing with complicated emotions, and just trying to find a, like a means through it all. And I thought it was like, wow, that, that's a 16-year-old that wrote that shit? Mm -hmm. Very cool to me. Very, very like beyond impressive. And then there's like this little clip at the end where they're complaining about people who claim that they show support but won't even spend $10 to go to the show. And my first thought is, ain't shit changed. They still don't want to spend ten dollars to go to your damn show. Want to get in for free? Oh, if you can give me tickets, I'll come. It's like, yo, why am I spending my money to have you come to my show? That's, that's a little bit backwards, you mm -hmm. know. That's why, um, you know, you know who's down, and you know how most people's full of shit when you're an artist, and that's the truth of it. Strangers are way cooler than you, than the people that you know when you make art. So I thought it was really cool to see that that was still the same. And <laughs> it's always been a problem. So I gave this a 4.5 on 5. I thought it was really standout and really impressive. Yeah, I mean, I feel like you and I have very similar thoughts on this one. Um, I mean, I liked that it was sort of like a, a jazzy kind of a feel. Um, overall, great flow and great rhymes again. Um, I was really liking this one. Um, and they definitely sound like they, like they work really well together. Like they're like... 
I think there's like a couple, two guys on here, um, and like that, you know, I like that. I mean, they, say, you know, when they say, like they feel like they're friends, like they seem like it just comes across nicely. Um, I was bobbing my head to this one, so this one is like the, like probably one of the first or one of the few um, that really like kind of captured me and like got me going and like I was really into it. Um, so I think that's good. Um, I agree. I think uh, when at the end with like the the clip, I think it might be like a radio interview or something like that. Uh, and they're talking about exactly what you're saying. Um, you know, people are saying like you know how they've changed and like you know things are are different now. And um, you know, that, that, I think that's like what like their fans or whoever thinks. Um, and people feel like taken aback when they have to actually pay to like you know buy their record or whatever um you know but that's how you support your local artists exactly like what you were saying um so suck it up and pay the buck and um like i don't know like that's just what it is like it's you know to if you care about them and you want to care about you know the community of hip-hop and artists and things like that then this is what you need to do and it's just like a little bit and it may seem like like a lot for you but like if everybody gives a little bit then you know it helps everybody grow so hey why not so um this is sort of like a message for those who kind of expect um to have things given to them for free um like you know they're just not interested so it's a four on four on five for me all right so the last track we'll be discussing today is get this low uh you may have noticed that we missed the classic quest because we were talking about bodied which we're gonna finish up soon carney sparks we'll get you the second part this week um <laughs> where does the time go <laughs> but uh we were actually prepped and ready to go and like we're going to do organics by the roots which is basically an album that came out around this time and it was really like at first i was like oh cool the root sample that's connected i wasn't expecting us to actually get the black thought that we're going to be reviewing mm-hmm. basically the same era of black thought on this project and he comes in and it's like an instant like psh, we're in a different fucking project all of a sudden mm-hmm. there's nowhere to no, and he's just got this fast upbeat flow now where to go and i'd be flowing try to flow on them before back in the day when i was poor i couldn't afford to be a guru on your case like a lawyer think you're wrong you're mistaken put all records to the side it's in it's in your face i'm fucking breaking you know it just kind of has this like aggressive desperate tone to it and he like kind of spits through I mean, it's, it's it's pretty fun it, i mean i have a lot of huge commentary on it like mm-hmm. real in want to be flipped up like some shrimp on the barbie i, I do my dirt up and fairly chill up in the uppy upper derby what i really felt from the verse though in general outside of the flossiness the kind of grittiness of who he is is just how fast paced and interesting the rhythm was and how like dope and aggressive almost and like black thoughts verse was really stand out to me as something that i'm going to remember off this project which yep. i thought was cool the hook features biz Marquis and odb going on about jacques cousteau who goes in deep i'm like okay i get it get this low go low like jacques cousteau Mm -hmm. okay and then icon sounds amazing you know this beat addict i'm crushing mcs across static pants the pad it touched there's an addict the dopest that wrote this the suckers provoked this now it's time for the perpetrators to quote this so here's the thing it's not like next level but he's fucking 16 and it sounds super fresh right like that's kind of the feeling i have like i can't expect a 16 year old to be dropping the same shit he was dropping when he was 20 but like at the same time i feel like is the way he's rapping it how tight it is how perfect like his delivery and flow art it is like damn that's fucking cool and then just a lot comes in and does his verse i believe that's the same dude that ends up being a part of jedi mind tricks but at this point i don't know if he was part of it either way he comes in and does his verse and his proper meet and make as you fake as an imitatism greater because i do my best work on paper mad raps raps the disaster from the master snatching up rappers and taking out actors same kind of shit you know does a diehard reference it's all right i have a lot more to like comment on the track the beat was nice the overall feel was cool and i just thought it was really nice to be able to like kind of get like a, a black thought verse of that era right before we go into the album yeah which i've listened to but haven't really gone in deep on at this point mm-hmm either way i thought this was great and honestly i felt like the last two tracks were like such a pick me up on this album of like interest and like catching me in an interesting way so i'm giving this another 4.5 i thought it was a really cool track yeah um i mean yeah same sort of thing uh i mean like it was really cool to listen to like black Th- black thought um it was nice uh like he you know he does a really good job um at the beginning and i think he does like the first two verses and like so i think that's really cool 
Um, the beat is super nice and sort of like bubbly on this one. It's a little bit more uppity, um, so I like that. Um, and the rhymes are really great. Like there's just really, they're just really good. Um, uh, Juz Allah comes in at some point and uh, I wasn't really sure who he is, but I think he's part of the, what is it? Something Sons of Babylon or something like that. Like he's part of like that other group. Um, but I really liked his flow and like his sound. I thought that he he was kind of he cool. He's part of Army of the Pharaohs and he's part of Jedi Mind Tricks at one point. Oh, I thought he was part of, anyways. I'm all confused by these guys. But anyways, like, um, I, I liked his flow. So, I mean, I gave this song a, a 4.25. I definitely thought it was a fun one. Um, it was a little bit more like, you know, like I said, it was uppity. And I think it was, um, it was a nice continuing change of pace from, like, the beginning part of the, the album. Fair enough. So I guess that brings us to the end of the project. Um, I gave it two grades. I gave it, like, the album proper. And then I gave the grade with, like, everything. So just the album is a 4.33, and then with everything is a 4.31, and I was like, hmm. was there really a point in giving two grades at that <laughs> point? But I thought it would be cool to see what would happen. Um, this is a consistent as lyrical fucking onslaught of complicated language, flossing that they're smarter than you, they read more books than you, and so they're proving their wit and their intelligence and their understanding of history I and spirituality. I think that they just read different books. Though. No. I don't know. Okay, smarter. Well, when I say smarter, I mean like more profound mm -hmm. in the regards of trying to have a deeper understanding of life, whereas other people might have read stuff like Nancy Drew, which might. Well, she has to solve problems. Exactly, it's a different kind of problems, <laughs> but um, I think that they're they proved they're very capable rappers and whatnot. But like, it felt so underground and gritty right like this is if you're not if you like songs per se i don't know if you're gonna like these tracks if you into some dope ass rapping over some grammy ass beats some old school sound and shit this is really nice and really smart and hitting it with like a level of depth and understanding of some complex topics where it made it for like an invigorating experience where there's not a lot of stuff i can say i've heard quite like that on the other hand, I don't see myself like running back to this album right away to put it on. Yeah. But on the other hand, I see <laughs> myself in a while going, I'm going to throw that album on. Hmm. All right. Um, I gave this, you know, I gave it one grade for the entire thing. Um, a 4.05 on 5. So that's like an 81%. So it just makes it into the uh, classic field. Um, I, I had a really hard time with this album. Um, getting through like the first like two thirds was difficult um and it was just very like stuff that i had no idea about as i mean i've gone on and on and on um and then like the last you know songs like i guess the the bonus songs were much more easy uh, easier for me to listen to and to understand um obviously again they're not as connected to the theme of like the album proper itself um which is where i'm lost um but to, and they're from earlier on which is just kind of cool that they just wanted to like put on um you know songs that they have maybe recorded and didn't have a spot to put and they were just like yeah just throw them on at the end of this one and like it works because i mean it's a nice change of pace from everything else um and yeah, I mean, overall, I mean, if you like lyrical albums and you like something that's a little bit less uh, American, I guess, or like Western, um, and you want something a little bit more Eastern influence and like ancient philosophy, and like I said, you know, we've said this a million times, but um, or I've said this a million times, um, I think that this would be something that you would really enjoy. Um, and if you've never checked them out, let us know if you check them out now. Cool. So thank y'all for watching. We totally appreciate you being here with us. We look forward to seeing what you're gonna say in the comment section of this video. And if you make that effort to leave a comment, we'll make that effort to answer you. Feel free to subscribe to the channel for more reviews. Like the video if you did, because it tells YouTube you did. <laughs> and then um, special thanks to the patrons. as Milka Damsey, Chris Prado, Jonathan Barnes, DJ Black Hurricane, Lindale Williams, and Coney Sparse. The support will be due. This episode was brought to you mostly because Ismail used his Patreon powers to get us to do it. <laughs> They helped us get a new camera. They're going to be paying for our site soon. And if you want to help us get to like a new level and support what we do with this deep ass, long ass album review thing, that's a cool way to do it. Otherwise, I make music. You can check that out. You can check it out in the description of this video. And let, let us know what you think about anything. Mm. Have yourselves a great day, everyone. Live long and prosper. Bye, guys.